abuse, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, things like this, which I, I forewarned you. Just I forewarned you that those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The deeds of the flesh or the old things that you have to put away. Have you put away anger? Have you put away gossip? Have you put away slander? Have you put away causing faction? What have you put away? Are they still so much a part of your life? If any man is in Christ, the old things have passed away because he's a new man. These are the things of the new man. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such there is no law. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, all things have passed away. How many things are you holding on to since you have said that you are a believer? Since you have said you're a person who follows the way of God in Christ? Since you're a person who knows that when you said yes to Jesus, you were sealed to the day of redemption by the Holy Spirit. And you know you belong to Him. What is different about our life? Are we still trying to hold on to those, those old things while we're trying to learn the new things? You've heard someone say before, there's no way that you can keep one foot in the devil's camp and one foot in the Lord's camp and have any victory whatsoever. You can't straddle the fence. When you become a new man in Christ, there's no magical words that bring you there. A lot of people will tell you, just go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I know I've sinned. I've got faults in my life. Forgive me. Come into my life. Take me, I'm yours. Those are great words. But if they come from the head and not from the heart, all you've got is head knowledge. When you become a new man in Christ, it's got to reflect your heart, your character from who you were to who you not who you are now has to have drastically changed. To be in Christ, you're the new man. You had the attitude of Christ. What you've done, you've traded your doubt for fear. You've traded your uh, your confusion for peace. I wrote some of these down so I wouldn't forget them. Let me see where I put them. Here we go. You traded your doubt for faith. You traded your your fear for faith. You traded your anxiety for peace. You traded hell for heaven. You traded sor sorrow for joy. You, tra you, you traded uncertainty for the certainty of Christ. You traded instability so you could be steadfast and sure in the things of the Lord. You traded self for Christ and you traded defeat for victory. This is what you traded. I need to know, are you living in those things? Are you living in faith? Are you living in peace? Are you living with the hope of heaven? Are you living with the joy of the Lord? What the Bible says is your strength. Are you living with certainty that you know that you know that if you died today, that you go to heaven? Did, are you steadfast and sure in who God is, what His Word says, and in your faith? You know, the Scripture tells us often, examine your faith, make sure you're in it. This is one of the things you get to do today. Do you have the faith? Do you have the peace? Do you have the hope for heaven? Do you have the joy? Do you have the certainty? Do you have the steadfastness? Do you know that you're, you're living your life for Christ and not for self? And are you living in that victory? You know, when the Bible says nothing, no weapon formed against us will prosper. When it says nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ, we live in that constant victory. It makes no difference what the circumstances are around us when we have Christ within us. You know the story of the disciples being in the boat and the storm came upon the boat and Jesus came walking on the water. They were more concerned about the storm than they were about who Christ was. In this virus, I met many people who are 
more concerned about the virus than who Christ is. You know, Christ is going to care for me in this virus. I'm not saying I'm immune to it by no means. If I get it and it takes me out of this world, it's taking me to the... I, I have that certainty in me. I know that when I die, I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to rush it, but if God wants to take me, guess what? I'm His. He's in control. Amen? I know I have this certainty, and I know that I have this victory. It's steadfast and sure based on the Word of God. When we think about becoming this new man in Christ, I want you to look with me in Luke chapter 10 and verse 27. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. This lawyer has come to Jesus. He says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he, he respect, responds, responds to this lawyer in this way. In verse 21 it says, Behold, a certain lawyer stood up, testing him, and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written? He says, Well, you shall love the Lord your God with all your strength, all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. All, and all your mind, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. When you give yourself to Christ, and you become that new man, new, new person. You have the opportunity to put your life in service by committing your all to the Lord. If you notice before each one of those words in chapter 10, verse 27, the word all is before each one of those. Give all of your heart. Give all of your mind. Give all of your strength. You see, you can't give the Lord 75% and you hold on to 20. You can't even give Him 99% and you hold on to 1. You can't hold a secret room in your heart just for you to do what you want to when you want to. You've got to give it all to Him. You see, that means total surrender. I know the scripture says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord be, be saved. That's where everybody gets that simple believism from. But if you really look at Romans 10, 13, where it says, for all who call upon the Lord, the word Lord in the Greek language, the closest word we have to it in the English language is boss. That means when you transfer into the kingdom of God, you come under the total lordship of Jesus Christ. You learn to hear His voice. You learn to accomplish His will. You learn to follow the truths that He gives you in the Word. You learn to apply His principles to your life so you walk in faith and not fear. You have peace and not anxiety. You're disciplined and not unorganized. You have the ability to walk in the Lord because He establish your steps and he leads you along your way that's who the new person in christ is that's who the new person in christ is let me ask you this it makes no difference where you've been and who you are i want you to know that jesus christ he took the woman at the well he took the woman caught in adultery he took the doubter thomas he took the, the terrible tax collector he took the pessimist. You know, Thomas said, Can any good thing come out of, out of Nazareth? One of the disciples was a pessimist. God will take you wherever you are. He took the thief on the cross. God will take you wherever you are. Let me share with you a verse of scripture in the book of Revelation. Verse 22, verse 17. And the Spirit and the bride said, Come. Let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let him who wishes to take the water of life without cost. Let him come. Do you know that anybody and everybody, wherever they are, whatever they've gone through, whatever they've thrown themselves into, whatever muck or mire they've got into, whatever uh, choices they've made that have led them down the wrong road, whatever, 
how much you rebel. It doesn't make any difference. Jesus said in Revelation, listen, if you're thirsty, come. He says, let him who say he's thirsty, come. And if you want the water of life, guess what? He comes free to you with no cost. But when you come to that new man, based on 2 Corinthians 5, 17, when you come to that new man, this is what happens. When you recognize that you traded hell for heaven, and that you got joy for song, you got peace from anxiety, you know that in Christ you're going to conquer the grave because he says, if I live, you live too. You know all of this. You know, what I really think we ought to understand is God poured out and is pouring out today. He is pouring out His favor upon our life. You know, for His favor, I think my response is this. I'm to live thankfully before Him. I'm to live obediently before Him. I'm to live with the heart that God has for this world that I live in. He says in 2 Peter 2.9, it's not his will that any should perish, but all that should come, all should come to have everlasting life. I looked at an Instagram this morning that said this. Can I get an amen? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad in it and serve him. I said, yes, you can get an amen. It's my daily habit. Really, it's my daily desire to praise my Lord, to thank my Lord, and bless His holy name, and find some way to serve out my calling by touching someone's life with the goodness of God. It said in that Instagram that this is to be done every day. You see, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 just says, if you're a new man in Christ, old things pass away. Behold, all, all things came new. There's no day listed on that. When the lawyer talked to Jesus and said, what must I do to eternal life? He gave him a responsibility. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your, <laughs> excuse me, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. He gave him a responsibility. You see, you don't get saved to sit and wait on the Lord to come. You get saved to serve the Lord until He comes. That's a big difference. My heart for you today is just to know this. God saved you. His favor is on your life. Are you living out a life of thanksgiving for all the favor the Lord has shown you. Knowing that favor you traded, your destiny, you were destined toward hell. Now you're destined toward heaven. Isn't that a good thing, congregation? Isn't that a great thing, congregation? Isn't that an amazing thing, congregation? Isn't that the most awesome thing that could have ever happened to your life? You were headed toward hell. Now you're headed toward heaven. You can't get a better deal than that. Because it came to you free, according to Revelation 22, 17. But are you? Are you really? you got to be honest with yourself. Are you really living your life in faithfulness for becoming the new person in Christ by blessing His name every day, by praising His name every day, by seeking to walk in His holiness every day, by serving Him every day. Are you living your life out laughing for the kingdom of God? Are you zealous for the kingdom of God? Are you on fire for the kingdom of God? If not, this is our prayer today. Lord, stir my heart. Stir my mind. Stir my soul. Let me have the heart that Christ had for this community, for this world. When He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Even on the cross, he showed his favor. He was willing to die. 
What is your heart for God today? If you're willing to die for the Lord, then I think your heart's in the right place. I don't know how that's going to happen for you. I don't know how that's going to happen for me. But I can tell you this. Whenever the Lord comes for me, if He takes me out of here like He did Amy, I want to know that when He says, what were you doing when I called you me? I was preaching or I was sharing with somebody my faith in the street corner or I was down on my knees praying and I finished my conversation in heaven. I just want to know that when He finds me and He takes me home, when something happens in my life, if I was going down the road the semi hits me, I wanted to know I was listening to the radio and I was singing with sidewalk prophets, come to the table, everybody's welcome, amen? Then I want to be found wherever I'm at on any given day, at any moment, I want to be found with my heart right before God because He made me the new man. He took the old things out of my life and He's bringing the new things into it. And, you know, there's more about God than I'm going to have the, have the ability to learn in my lifetime. But I'm going to catch up when I get to heaven. I want you to know that. But I'm going to grow in Him as best as I can, as much as I allow Him to lead me. I'm going to get to know Him better every single day. And when I know Him better every single day, like you should know Him better every single day, this is what you're going to understand. He loves you more than I can imagine. I'm going to serve you with all of my heart, all of my soul, and all of my strength, and all of my mind. You're going to seek your strength from Him. You're going to love Him with all your heart because He's going to be totally surrendered to Him with 100%. You're going to love Him with your mind because you're going to stay in the Word. You're going to know it's true. And you're going to be able to give an answer to any question anybody asks you. And just in case you haven't studied it when they ask you yet, God said, don't worry about that either. I've got the Spirit for you now. He's going to teach you what to say in the moment you need to say. We get to rely on the Spirit. The world can never catch the child of God off guard if we stay in the Word and let the Spirit lead our life in our conversations. We will be those vibrant, living, new men and women in Christ who get our life 100% every day. For those of you who don't know, the scripture says this, come and take of the water of life without Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. He says, nobody comes to the, comes to the Father but by me. He's the light of the world. You need him in this dark hour of the brain. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord, Savior, and Master, not hard to think that you know him today. The Bible says now today is a good day for salvation. You don't need to put it off any longer. No, I'm not afraid this corona is dying for you. If you're out at Home Depot, if you're out in Lowe's or Walmart or Edwards or CBS, or you can go to Harbor Freight. These places are considered essential. But they don't want us to come in our building. They don't think we're essential. We know we are. But if I'm out there somewhere, and someone breathes on me, sneezes on me, coughs on me, and I get the COVID virus, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm going to wear a mask. You see, you see. I got one in my pocket now. If you want to come down and talk to me, you wear your mask. We've got. So to say, our hand sanitizer in there, we'll, we'll take care of all that. We will be cautious. God did give us common sense. Amen. He did. I think I, I think he blessed me with more common sense than intelligence. My wife got the intelligence. I got the common sense. So we make a pretty good team. But here it is. God tells us to trust him. I trust him with my life. Because he gave me his, I give him mine. If you don't know Jesus today, COVID-19 gets you, I can't stand and rejoice at your bedside on your deathbed. I can't. Except say, hey, today accept Jesus. Before you pass away, accept Jesus. It takes you. And since you don't know when you're going, you need to get him today. Because he loves you and he gave his life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in this moment, 
Lord has told me that if a person is new in Christ, they've got a past, but that past is not held against them. They've got a, a new beginning. And we're going to be held accountable for what we do with that new beginning. How we live. Lord, every believer is a witness. Every witness for the kingdom or witness, witness against them. Help us realize the favor you pour upon our life. And I pray that for the believer, our lives will become more faithful, more willing to live for the causes of the kingdom. Lord, for those who don't know, they recognize what they need to trade. They need to trade hell for heaven. I ask in Jesus to be the Lord of our life. By repenting of their sin. By making a commitment, Lord, this is my life. It's no longer mine. I give it to you. You're in control. Let them repent and surrender their life to the responsibility of living for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. What a great place to serve. Help us all be willing to.